Welcome and thank you for joining me for Talk the Walk. I'm Janie Morris and each episode I'll be talking with people who have a great story to tell that may inspire you, may encourage you in life or maybe of interest to share with others because that's what we love to do, spreading the love of inspirational stories and stories of people that oftentimes don't get told. So today my two guests are young women who have sort of carved out an exciting business together and they've done this through the Copenhagen ice cream chain. Now for those of you who know me well I am an ice cream lover and specifically since uh, I met these girls and uh, started getting their fabulous product from their uh, businesses I am absolutely hooked but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Alinta Ambrose and Scarlett Parker welcome to Talk the Walk. Thanks for having us on. <laughs> I'm having a glass of coffee and ice cream. <laughs> exactly. Look, Alinta, let's start with you. Can you share with us uh, a little bit of your background and um, how how everything got started? Yep. So um, I worked at Copenhagen at Glenelg when I was in high school and it was just kind of a casual part-time job and I guess I didn't think too much of it, although I really enjoyed working there. Um, and then I finished school, sort of did uni for a bit, deferred for a bit, went travelling for a bit, came back um, to finish off uni and started working at the Henley Beach store. Um, and I was doing a law degree at the time. So I guess I was doing uni and working part time, but I felt like I just really loved working in Copenhagen and I really loved sort of being near the beach um, and hospitality. So I thought, oh, I really don't want to finish working here when I finish my degree, but this would be really great if I had my own shop. Um, so I, we sort of thought it would be good for a store to be down at Semaphore because there wasn't too much down there at the time. Um, and then I, yeah, finished the degree and the shop opened a month or two later. Um, and yeah, I still love being near the beach. I still love ice cream and hospitality um, and I think I just knew that I sort of identified a bit more with that kind of lifestyle um, compared to being in an office that's how I felt at the time and I, I think I still feel like that too. Scarlett your your background and your story yes. isn't isn't dissimilar to what Alinta's just shared is it can you share share with us yours? Yeah so I guess I was looking for my first part-time job and I must have happened upon the winter looking for staff for a new shop opening in Semaphore so I sent my resume through and was then did an interview at the Henley Beach store um, in must have been 2011 and then yeah, I got the job, which was really exciting. And just ever since then, I've just loved the environment so much. And it's been 10 years now that I've worked with Alinta. And it's just, yeah, I just can't think of a better place to work. It's such a good environment, so many great customers. And I just really love working in hospitality and not sitting down all day or anything, just like constantly up and about and chatting with people is what I really enjoy. So... Now, Scarlett, you you did uh, for a while there. Your your direction of what you were going to do with life started to go in a different direction, didn't it? You you yes. actually you actually started university, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. So, yeah, I did uh, about three years of a teaching degree, and I really enjoyed it. And I think it at the time was something that I wanted to do, but I was just thinking about more of where I want to be in the future and I kind of decided that being a teacher wasn't exactly the right path for me and um, I just wanted to keep seeing how I could progress um, it, with the Copenhagen franchise and then possibly revisit the idea of um, working in a school or teaching later in life um, but I wasn't in any rush to do that now especially giving up something that I love so much I didn't want to give up Copenhagen so 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 how did the two of you decide that you were going to come together and because Alinta you already had Copenhagen 
um, your your franchise there. And as Scarlett's just said, like, for, and happy anniversary, Scarlett, 10 years um, uh, with, with the franchise there as well. How so? How did that conversation take place? Because you're because you're good friends. Um, so how did how did that conversation? How did that go with joining together? Because it could be dicey, couldn't it? Like joining, getting involved in business together, and potentially you know things not happening quite right and losing a friendship. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that my relationship with Scarlett right from the start has always been just a special one, even though we have a bit of an age gap between us. Um, we had just always, I guess, had like a kind of special relationship at work. And I knew that Scarlett was someone who just always like never let us down and also loved being in the shop. And I think you can tell like with Scarlett, she would always, you know, want to be working when it's busy. And she always wanted to know everything that was going on in the shop. And um, we had just worked hours and hours and hours together because we both kind of always liked being there over the busy times. Um, and then I guess as we kind of went on, I was like, well, I don't want Scarlett to like ever not work here. Um, and it kind of felt like we were already running the shop together sort of anyway. Um, so yeah, I thought that it would be something that she might be interested in and something that would also be like helpful to me as I kind of get a bit older and have kids and stuff to have another person that also is sort of all over the shop um and also I yeah really like working with her and I was like I want us to keep, I want this to keep going on I can't imagine doing it without her either so um yeah we just kind of chatted about it um and it was something that she was interested in too and we kind of just went from there what sort of challenges uh, have you found over the years in starting, uh, getting involved in an entrepreneurial franchise like this? Um, especially as you know, as you as you both mentioned, you've both got into the industry uh, at a fairly young age for taking over ownership. Um, what can you give us some sort of challenges that you've you've met and and how you've overcome them? Maybe maybe go with you first, Scarlett. Um, I think definitely being so young, it's always hard. Um, I don't know when you enjoy working so much and like over all the busy periods and stuff, but it might be a time where all your friends are doing different things and that kind of thing. And I think when you're like 18, 19, 20, it's um, hard for your friends to understand that work is really important to you when it's not something that might be really important to them at the time. So, you know, they might be just calling up sick for shifts and things like that but I'm like no that's not what we do here like this is a it's a different kind of environment and workplace where you like really respect all the other staff to a like really high level and just the business in general so that was definitely one hard thing um but I think really it's just been challenges but in a way where you learn lots from them and things might go wrong but um it's just like, you know, it's going to happen eventually and the only way to look at it is in a positive way where you learn something from it, I think, and not, not let it get you down. And Linda, with your with the uh, Scarlett's uh, mentioned there, the staff, the, the staff are the most important element of any business, um, you know, the team that you work with. With, with your team, uh, with the staff that you have at both um franchises now as well what sort of challenges uh at, well not challenges so much but how do you how do you choose who's right for the culture that the two of you created uh people always ask how we find stuff and I always think that we've found most of our people because they've just either come into the shop and we've been chatting to them and they've been really nice and from there we often sort of get people who are friends with people who already work there or siblings so we've always kind of I guess started out with our base staff and then we kind of get people branching off from there but I always think when you meet people you can just tell in about five minutes if they are going to be right for the business so just if they're friendly chatty smiley um yeah, I think it's, we don't really so much get resumes and go through them. It's more just about meeting people in person and 
seeing if they're the right fit. And I think usually we can tell pretty quickly if we've got it wrong after someone's been there for a month, if they've kind of, you know, we like to say they've catfished us where they might have been <laughs> at the start and then they're just not kind of got the right um, approach to work. But, yeah, usually like some of our most wonderful staff have just been people that have come to the shop for an ice cream and we've just chatted and then we've said, oh, we're looking for some people to work. Would you be interested in coming in? Um, yeah. So so uh, a year or so ago you decided to add to the little um uh, to the little empire that the two of you are creating. Um, can I put it that way? Um, and a new store, you mentioned it before, it's actually where both of you uh, started out um, at Henley Beach. That, that franchise um, became available. Alinta, when, when it did, um, what, what were you thinking at the time of taking on another one? Because if my memory serves me correctly, uh, I think you'd not long had your your baby yeah look we ask ourselves the same <laughs> question um I think we just saw that was available and thought that it had some potential to be you know a really good store and get we wanted to try and create the same kind of environment and feel that we have at semaphore um so and we thought oh it's not that far away you know we're always between Henley and semaphore we can sort of add it into our lifestyle without too much you know disruption um so yeah we just thought well let's just go for it and see if we can I guess have it as a bit of a project to get it where we'd like to be and give it a bit of love and um yeah just make our lives a bit more busy than <laughs> I'm glad you said make your lives a bit more busy and not easier because <laughs> definitely not easier. <laughs> so, 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 Scarlett, with with that taking on uh, that new store, um, the challenges that you found because it was an existing franchise, the challenges that you uh, found initially, um, how did you overcome those? Because that because it's especially with as I mentioned before, the two of you have created an incredible culture, both for your uh, customers as well as your team uh, that work with you. How did you overcome those challenges with the Henley Beach? Um, I think it's really just being open and honest about your goals and what you want for the shop and the kind of environment you want to create for all the staff as well. So it's often hard. Well, it is hard going into a place that is already established and it already has staff members and everything. They're used to a different boss and then new people come in. And yeah, I think one of the main things that we wanted to do was just to be honest with all the staff there and kind of tell them what we wanted from um, taking it over. And yeah, we just wanted to make it a real positive place, I suppose, and make it a fun place for families to go and enjoy a nice ice cream down by the beach so with um with the franchise of copenhagen um it's it, it's well known any big uh franchise uh chains always uh, you know that there's there's that brand you've got to follow and that's that pathway that you've got to follow and that formula how have you both found the support system that you actually get from the franchise chain um i think Copenhagen is a different kind of franchise compared to like Subway or something where you can't have any sort of freedom in what your specials you're doing and things like that. And that's something that we really like about the franchise. I think each store is able to put its own touch on, you know, things that you offer and how it looks and how it feels. So that's, a, I guess, bonus that we like of it. Um, and then the franchise door is kind of in the background there where if you need something, they're obviously always available um, and help a lot with sort of the ice cream production side of things and teaching all of that and all that kind of refrigeration equipment stuff, which is certainly something that I'd had no idea about when I was first starting out. So it was, yeah, help with that kind of area. So I guess they're just always there if you need them, but they're not too kind of in your okay. face all the time. Um, which is, yeah, it still feels like you've got your own store, I guess. Yeah. Now, we've, ju we've just come through 2020. 
how did how did you go how did the two of you go with your business in through throughout COVID how what what sort of things did you do as soon as it because it was over it was just a year ago we just celebrated the anniversary as to when the entire country or actually the entire world was shut down uh, that would have been a massive shock for you how, what sort of things did you put in place in order to ride that through well Scarlett just sent me a photo yesterday of the shop when we had first just changed it around into being a kiosk and she's like oh my god this is a year one year ago and I saw it and I'm like I kind of miss it so even though it was such a crazy roller coaster year I guess it felt really exciting in a way um so initially we were really quiet when everyone was kind of staying at home and we noticed a huge drop off um in March when like there are a few festivals and things on at Semaphore which were cancelled. So we thought, oh, my gosh, what's this going to be like? We were pretty worried um, and initially kind of stood down some of our staff. And then we sort of found once people understood a little bit more what was going on and some of the um, government programs and things came in place that it was different but we could kind of make the most of it. So we turned our shop into a kiosk because we couldn't have any seating. So we were lucky we were able to just serve from the front. Um, and we went on to Uber Eats, which we previously hadn't been and really tried to embrace the takeaway culture and add on products and update our signage and print out things to really make takeaway as easy as possible for our customers and to try and um, promote ourselves, I guess, as a great place to grab something to cheer you up or um, you know, so many people were working from home, so we tried to make sure that they remembered us to come by for coffee when they're taking their dog for a walk. Um, so I think once we got over the initial shock and the initial quiet period, we really tried to adapt quickly to offer things that people wanted for comfort and that could be taken away easily. Um, and yeah, people responded really well, I think, because they couldn't really do too much else. Um, they were just, yeah, out and about at Semaphore. We've never seen so many people walking around and, yeah, just being down at Semaphore. So we, I think we made the most of it. Definitely. Excellent. Now, now, so here we are in 2021. So, Scarlett, what, what's next for you two young entrepreneurial women? <laughs> um. I don't know really I think we still have um like a long way to go with Henley Beach and building that up to where we want it to be so I think just putting in the same amount of effort that we do um with Semaphore and keeping that up between both stores and really just trying to make them um the best that they can be um yeah so mainly I think just working on that this year and working together a bit more and yeah, kind of a year to figure out our goals, I think. So, Alinta, what, uh, if you were to um, say just, uh, you know, like a, a couple of key words, not sentences, but a couple of key words, what do you think would define the two of you as partners in a business together? What strengths do you think that the two of you have for, the, for business? Uh, I'm bad at putting things into some. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't use the words, just give me a couple of sentences then. Uh, I think we care about each other a lot and neither of us wants to let the other down. So that's sort of, you know, when you work for yourself, you're usually kind of the last, you know, you're answering to yourself, but with a partner, you're also answering to them. And I, you know, don't want to let Scarlett down. I think she doesn't want to let me down either. Um, and we're both on the same page with what we, you know, what we think is good service and what we think is clean and organised and sort of have the same standards for things. Um, and we are both, yeah, very reliable as well. I think we know that each other will always also have the businesses back and if something needs to be done there, we will both be happy to do it and, yeah, committed to, you know, keeping things running well and making it enjoyable for each other too so yes yeah. so um the obvious question that most listeners will be wanting to ask and it's a question that 
I know that I want the answer to because I don't know how this works. But how do you stay away from your amazing products <laughs> and <laughs> the, temp, the daily temptation of what the two of you offer in your amazing business? So, so what, what's the key to that? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is we don't. <laughs> um, you go, Scarlett. I am still eating lots of brownies and having hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, I would like to say after a certain amount of years, you don't have it as often, but I still have an ice cream on my break when it's a nice day, hot chocolate when it's cold. It's just like I don't know. I think it's not a it's not a thing you want to avoid. I think we sell a good product and you want to enjoy it yourself. And you have to know that we're always selling a good product, I suppose. So <laughs> well, I, must, I, yeah. I, I, I must say that I bet that your families are absolutely yeah. love that the two of you own this business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Abby's favorite flavor is still just vanilla, which is pretty boring. <laughs> is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and and I must say, I think it's one of the things that I have noticed too with the franchise, with the two of you, is that um, you you really love the feedback from your customers of new flavours that you're always testing and trying as well. Um, and, uh, you know, so don't forget my phone number next time you want a, uh, another <laughs> testing because I'm happy for that. Um, before I let both of you go... Our listeners would love to know, and I would love you to share with everybody, what advice do you have for other young people that might be thinking the same as the two of you actually have already shared with us is that, you know, they may already be on sort of a um, an education pathway and with, with a set focus in mind, but there might be something ticking in their head going, oh, I'm not 100% set that I really want to end up doing that I might like to tip you know sort of put my toe in the water and try something that is all about me that I can do what sort of advice would you give those young people Scarlett? Um, I think my advice would be that if you have a feeling in your gut you just have to trust it and you're just going to end up not liking what you're doing if you're following a path that you're not 100 percent about and I think you just have to know that you can do it, especially if you've got the right support system and the right people around you who are constantly lifting you up. And, um, yeah, there's really nothing that you can't do when you've got your mind set to it and you've got the right attitude. Excellent. Alinta, what advice would you give them? Yeah, pretty similar. I think I always tell myself and like to say to run your own race. So, trying not to think about what other people might want me to do or you know do other people think this is a cool job it's about what's making me happy and what I am enjoying um and yeah just kind of following that and then I think the success comes with that when you're happy doing what you're doing um everything else just kind of falls into place well, that's, that's great advice. And I thank you both so much for, you know, I know you're both busy, especially with, um, you know, both of the both of the businesses that you've got and what have you. Thanks so much for giving us a little bit of insight into what it's like to just go from one step and then go straight into such an amazing entrepreneurial business and be so successful, but do it in such a uh, holistic and, and supportive way. Um, Alinta and Scarlett, thank you so much for being with us and we will put your details of where the businesses are um, underneath uh, this podcast which will be featured on all fabulous podcast apps around the world so um, may I suggest to any of the listeners that uh, if you've enjoyed this as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you that uh, next time you pop into either one of uh, Scarlett and Alinta's Copenhagen's that you let them know that you heard us today Alinta and Scarlett thank you so much for being our special guest today. Thank you for having That's us, nice. ladies. <laughs> You're more than welcome. <laughs> exactly. And look, as I said, if you've enjoyed, uh, if you've enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we have enjoyed bringing it to you, please comment and like and, and share because spreading the word is the key to creating change. And don't forget, you can check out and up uh, your updates on all the other episodes of Talk the Walk at our website at janiemorris.com or, of course, on your favourite podcast app. I 
I'm Janie Morrison. It's been an absolute delight to have your company today on Talk the Walk.